Pam 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 Hey everybody, come on in here. What a horrible, horrible day. Terrible shooting in New Zealand. 47 people so far died from some crazy monster. His name will not be uttered. We shall not speak the name of the crazy killer. And even when I see it, I make sure I don't remember it or take note. And I think that's a good idea. So before we get going, shall we enjoy one of life's few pleasures? The simultaneous sip. Grab your mug, your cup, your glass, your stein, your chalice, your thermos. Fill it with your favorite liquid. I like coffee. And join me for the simultaneous sip. Well, just when you think CNN could not get any worse, they've gone to a whole new level. So as you know, most of you have been following the drama. Um, I've been hammering on CNN for their fine news fake reporting, which is uh, causing things like the New Zealand shooting. So I'm just going to say it directly. If, if there's somebody who did a big shooting, and it looks like that's what the, uh, the news is reporting, that he was um, encouraged by his belief that the president was a white supremacist, where would he have gotten that belief? Do you think that the New Zealand shooter got his belief that the president is a white supremacist by watching Fox News? No, because Fox News says the opposite. Do you think the New Zealand shooter came to believe that the president is a white supremacist because he read Breitbart? No, because Breitbart doesn't say that. He says the opposite. Do we think that the shooter came to that opinion by looking at real news and, and coming to his own judgment? No, because nobody does that. The New Zealand shooter didn't do it. Nobody on this broadcast did it. <laughs> you think you did, but you didn't. We are all assigned our opinions by the news, for the most part. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm exempt from that. Now, the only thing I do to give myself a little bit of, you know, at least hope for independent thought is that I watch the, the news sources continually on both sides. So I'm never, I'm never completely in a silo. Um, I, I use the trick of whenever the, uh, uh, whenever the TV news has a, a commercial for pharmaceuticals, I switch to the competing channel. And then the competing channel has that same commercial, and then I switch back. So, I'm, so I try to stay out of the silos and sample them all, all the time. Now, what do I see? What I see is different reporting. I see one network saying one thing, and the other network saying that thing is not true. So when I look at it, I go, huh, I don't know, I guess I have to make up my own mind. But suppose you only watch one network. What would you imagine about President Trump? If you only watched CNN, you would believe he was a white supremacist. And then you might start a manifesto to say so, and you might feel emboldened to go shoot up some mosques. So I think CNN has to uh, answer for creating this environment, and primarily they, through the, the hoax that, that they report that President Trump once said, this is the hoax, not real, that he once said that the neo-Nazis were fine people. That, of course, never happened. One of the ways that I know that never happened is that CNN reported it didn't happen. It's actually still on their news site. So back closer when, to when the Charlottesville event originally happened, they have actually accurate reporting saying that the fine people quote referred to people there who were protesting the statues and not referring to the neo-Nazis, who were also protesting, but they had their own deal going on. Um, so amazingly, 
uh, I think in the last 24 hours, CNN has pushed the same fake news at least three times that I know of, I think, or maybe four in 24 hours. It's the worst, most divisive, unscrupulous, damaging, immoral, completely immoral, fake news. Because it's all about um, damaging the president and is not about accuracy. Because the accuracy is that when he said there were fine people on both sides, he clarified it completely clearly and said he was not talking about the neo-Nazis, but rather people who were there to protest both sides of the statute question. Now, uh, Joel Pollack has another great follow-up to the same point that I'm making about CNN's fake reporting. I tweeted that around, and you should definitely read that. And it should be the link that you that you use um, when you're responding to people. Because what's good about Joel's most recent story is that it includes a link in it to CNN, CNN's own original reporting that's the opposite of what they're saying now. So that's sort of the kill shot for this hoax is to show that CNN has at one point reported it accurately, and it's still on their website. It's not deleted, because it's true, probably. <laughs> so, uh, so we're watching a situation, and I, and I swear this is true. So last night when I first heard the words, uh, or heard the news about the New Zealand shooting, I heard that somebody went into... Actually, I just heard that somebody went into a mosque and shot a bunch of people. The minute I, I heard that, I said to myself, CNN's going to blame the president for this. How are they going to do that? It's in New Zealand. How are they going to blame President Trump for this? And sure enough, wall-to-wall -wall coverage blaming President Trump for the problem that they created. So CNN's got this great business model where they, they create a problem and then they assign the problem to somebody else, and then they report on how bad that person is for something that the person didn't do, but rather CNN did. CNN creates the problem, assigns it to someone else, and then reports about that other person being bad. Now, that's a good business model. It's totally unethical, but it's a good business model. Um, uh, da, da, da. Scott, you blame CNN for what happened in New Zealand, but complain when CNN does it to Trump. That comment makes no sense. That's a nonsense. Um, I'm just looking at your comments right now. Um, so we haven't seen the, um, the shooter's manifesto, <clears throat> but some people who some people who uh, have seen it are reporting that uh, that the guy was more left than he was right. So he might have been a President Trump fan because he believes CNN's fake news. Uh, but wow. Would you watch a video of the shooting? Yes, I would. Um, and so... I, so let me, let me say this with some more context. I, I'm quite happy if the video of the shooting is scrubbed from the Internet and I never get to see it. So, so if the, the powers that be decide to just take that video out of circulation so that there's no way I could ever see it, I would be happy with that. I would support that. Uh, but somebody asked the question, if I could see it, would I watch it? The answer is yes, I would watch it. Because I don't know how I could not watch it. Um, so, somebody says, don't watch it, it's disgusting. Have somebody, uh, some of you have seen it? Oh, some of you have seen it. I didn't even know that it was available on the internet. I just assumed that it was not available. Um, somebody said, I did see it, it was horrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's the sort of thing that if you can stomach it and if it's available to watch, it's, it's going to give you a clearer view of how bad the world is, and maybe that's useful. So I don't think, I don't think the truth is always, 
you know, something you need to run from. But if it's so bad that it's going to damage you for the rest of your life, don't watch it. I'm surprised so many people watched it because I didn't think it would be easily available. I don't know where you found it. Where did you find it to even watch it? How could you, how could you watch it? Uh, Lively, so there's a few sites that still have it. All right. It's out there, but links are shut down quickly. Oh, okay. So as soon as it goes up, somebody's shutting it down. Um, all right. Well, I don't think I want to talk about that anymore. Um, so let's talk about Beto's hands. Um, I suppose there won't be any news except this this New Zealand stuff, and, of course, more fake news about fine people. But uh, the president's... Um, God, it's hard to talk about anything else, isn't it? Yeah, I want, I want to talk about other topics, but it just doesn't feel right. Like, I want to, I want to talk about Beto's hands, because that would be funny, but just, I don't know, it's just not today. I guess today is not the day. Too soon. And um, you know what? Uh, I, I, just, I just don't feel like I can enjoy uh, the Periscope this morning. So I think I'm going um, to cut it off short. Because, you know, when there's news like this that's just this bad, it just doesn't feel right talking about anything else for a while. You know, we just have to sort of let this sink in a little bit, <clears throat> you know, marinate it in a little bit. Um, and, you know, see if we can figure out a way to a better world. All right, so I'm going to, I just don't want to talk about anything fun today. It just feels inappropriate. So I'm just going to um, make it short today, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs>